You have to demonstrate the language. Like one of my relatives told me, once that pen hits that paper, the spirit of the language is gone. If you can't move that language, if those students can't get that word, you have to show them how to move it. Use your body. Use how to dance with the, dance the, um, our language. Because you gotta make it fun also. And even my other language teachers, I always tell them, you know, there's nothing wrong with teaching a word, we all do it, right? As human beings, we all do it. And that, that kids really like that. And of course, I, I went to the dollar store and I bought that bag, like that fart bag, and I would sit on it and I said, we get done, like, you know? And they would all take turns using it and they liked it. You gotta make it fun. <laughs> Even underwear. What's wrong with teaching bra? What, how to say a bra to do to me, huh? Happy Joy Class, of course, they found it so funny. They said, Happy Joy Class, like, you know? And I brought the real stuff. I brought underwear from home. You don't have to go buy my brand new stuff to teach the language, saving the clothing. I go to the second hand stores or wherever I dig around my house and I take the props from my house. I bring the real stuff. So you'll see even, <clears throat> and get them to repeat after you, like, like when I'm teaching the language, when I say, okay, puikito, say, ikoksipi, puikito, puikito, when then they repeat after me. And said, what does that smell? No, what does that smell? What does that, what does that mean? And they'll say, for, and then I even taught them, paso, smell, paso. And then I'll say, and then I'll take those two little words, we get to paso. What did I say? Smell my fart, like, you know? They, they put those words together. You gotta make it fun. Well, we have to make that the language fun in order for them to enjoy it. Because if they're not going to enjoy it if they're just sitting there coloring, it's about time that we put those crayons and those paper away and make the, those kids talk and make them move the language. So I'm going to do some little bit of examples how I teach the language, and just to make it fun. OK, I want. <clears throat> I have to get a chair. If I bring a chair up here. And you know, all day, this is what I do, talk, 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 and I drink a lot of water. Because in my classroom, like I said, there is no paper and pen allowed. All I do is talk. And the kids like it. And then we always, and you have to, another thing too, teachers, you have to show those kids that you love them. Teach from your heart. Don't teach from up here. Not from a moon now thinking, because they're not gonna get it. If you teach from the heart, I think indigenous and teach from the heart and you're gonna get those kids and they're gonna get the language. And that's one of the rules. Before they out, before they leave my class, I always tell them, "Sahitin, release Rense and release us." And they all know that we all stay, that I stand in a circle and say that. They never leave my classroom without me telling them I care about them. Because some of those kids, they never hear that at home. And us teachers, we have to show those kids because we want them to come, we want to come into our classrooms. Another, another thing too, it's not the, it's not the, a prep time for that teachers. They come in the class with the, the teachers, they come into my grade class with their students. They take their prep during gym or the computers, but not through pre. If, if we say our pre language is so important, why are we giving the teachers prep time during pre? We shouldn't. They should be coming in into the in the classroom with the students, and so if you if you're not there, the, the classes continue. They don't need us. They don't need us up. 
the teachers or the students can take over the class and they, they know the routine. Everything is there for them. So I suggest if you're admin, get the teachers involved if we think our language is very important because we need them. We need to work together. Because you know, as language teachers, we can't do it alone. We need the elders, who, we need to work as a team to get lifted. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of examples how I teach the language, uh, TPR. Okay, I'm gonna pretend you guys are my uh, bakery. Is that okay? <laughs> sit still and and when you tell them those words that we did you can use them when you're on supervision if the kids are running down the hallway even words like be careful meet so see the hall kasi we act out the words that way they'll get them any questions so far? Boy? Like I said, the only way that we're gonna get the language and move the language is we gotta teach with love. We have to teach from the heart, not from our head. And if we're gonna be and we gotta think indigenous. Then the hardest the hardest thing is 
or like I said, when I went to um, think indigenous, one of the elders said, the hardest trip to do is from your head to your heart, or your heart to your head. And sometimes for us, it's hard to soul love. But if you want to be a teacher or a three language teacher, we have to have love. Because if we don't, those kids, we're not going to get to those kids. We won't be able to reach out to those kids, and they need us. And like, if you're admin, get your, get your teachers involved. Get them in that language room with the teacher. I'm getting a cold. So even, you know, even outside, take them outside. You don't have to stay in a classroom to teach the language. Take them outside. They like playing games. They like, with me when it's, sometimes it's, it gets boring in a classroom, same old setting. So I take, I take them outside. In my classroom, it's like this. You won't see no posters, nothing. It's empty like this. All you see is those chairs and me because I don't want them to be looking at anything but and and plus I use flashcards. Oh yeah I'll show you those flashcards in my bank. And with these flashcards you can get your pictures anywhere, even from Google. Google Google has everything. <laughs> like these, these three words. These are some of the words that I taught my kids. Like this one, masnehan. Masnehan. Say that, masnehan. <laughs> Paper, masnehan. Masnehan. Now say it again by yourselves. Masnehan. Go like this. Masnehan. 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 Asni. 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 Asani. Paswa matun. Paswa matun. Paswa matun. Paswa matun. See, they, just teach, teaching these three three words, I made a game, and you guys probably know what it is already, right? Huh? Yes, paper, rock, scissors. So you can make it fun like that. And then I would tell them, let's say four, let's say four times each. So they see, and now the kids play it. Okay. So I could go. Us and four times each great tree. Asani, 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 asani. Masnehan, 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 masnehan. Pasqua matun, pasqua matun, pasqua matun, pasqua matun. And then I would group them. Okay, guys, play against each other. Okay, find a partner.
your arm with the green works that you're teaching. Another one too that I, the other way that I, like this one, it squeezes, it squeezes, say it squeezes, menos, atet, muswa, napises, mustos, mustos, and the other one too I say, what does mustos give us to drink? And of course they know how to say milk, they'll say do do sapun. And over here, over here, I, I tell them, Muswa. Well, what does, what's Muswa do do sapun then? And they know, moose milk. They know the, what moose milk, some of our students, and some of you know it's homebrew, right? <laughs> so make it fun. And they laugh about it. <laughs> And then we start putting words together. <clears throat> Napio, Napio, Inihuanes, Esquio, Mitsunate, Pimehagan, Pimehagan, Nichiwagan, my friend, Nichiwagan. What, what, did, what did I say if I said ni jiwa kan atim? What did I say, great tree? Yes, my friend, a dog. And but if, if we were fluent, if they were fluent, I would say ni jiwa kan no atim. But they were, they were starting to put the sentences together word by word. Remember, they're like newborn babies, right? So we just have to put the three words word by word. We can expect, but you can turn around and say it as a fluent speaker. Then they tell them, this is how the fluent speaker would say. Jaman, Muhammad, and our paper rock scissors, but there's here. See, you'll notice all these words. We see them every day. We see a road every day, right? When we get up, we go on a path or we drive on a road. Miskano. 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 And when you're teaching the language, you got to remember you teach how that community says the words. Because if I went to Kanule, my words would be different from how I pronounce my words from in Makosa. So I would have to talk to an elder from the community and say, is this how you say it? And remember, that you, see, you never tell the kids, oh, that's not how you say it. You don't ever correct them. You just keep saying the word. They'll correct themselves anyway. And even when you're... Another, another thing too, when they come in my classroom, I'll ask them, oh, Tanti si Haswin, and they'll tell me their name. Tanti Uchikia. They'll say, Mr. Skousa Haven, no Huchinam from Big Island. And I would ask them, you got to teach them, well, what does Tansi Sihasui mean? And they'll have to tell you, what's your name? What does Mustuk Skausarehan mean, Big Island? We don't want them to map some, some of, I know some of our Cree words, when we're teaching Cree, some of our students just memorize, and, but they don't know what it means. I know for a fact, I, uh, some of our students, they memorize the prayer and they don't even know what they're saying. Like this one child, they uh, came up to me because he knew I was a Cree teacher and he said, oh, wa, uh, wa I said, oh, wow, I didn't say a sentence. But what does wapos mean? I don't know. Like, you know, so we have to make sure that we uh, teach these children, our students, what they're saying even if it takes word by word. And you know what, there's no time limit. Don't rush the language. Don't say, okay, I'm gonna only teach this for one week and move on. Make sure they get the words. Because you know what, when I'm teaching these words, sometimes I teach them for four weeks, six weeks. I don't put a time limit. Because when, I, when I'm teaching these words, and then when I go back and I start putting little sentences together like, is real, the What did I say? The woman walked. 
a woman and but now the fluent speaker would say is will be more deal at least now they're understanding and then I would put these words I would put like it's squeezes I would put a squeezes seeking an appetite uh, uh, somebody brushing their teeth I would put them on a, and they have to read it they would, would have to read the picture sentence and they would have to tell the whole the students what they're saying so you know that half an hour of teaching our language with the students give it all you got even if you're sweating and tired at the end it's going to pay off sometimes i say oh i'm getting too old for this job but you know someday i see myself as an elder helping the teachers how to you know try and learn language with them and never give up put your paper and your crayons away because when we were born we learned how to speak first they taught us how to speak they taught us how to move the language they didn't teach us how to color they didn't teach us how to we couldn't read our language first we had to we had to know what those words what, what we were saying and how to pronounce those words any questions so far Okay. I must be doing good. I didn't get no questions. Just kidding. <laughs> no, but um, you know, my uh, I'm so lucky for the place I'm around, where I'm from, Makusale, and even the surrounding communities, from people from Lainta's, Waterhen, Big Island, Manistiquan. There's a lot of elders there that I can reach out to when I don't know how to say a word. All you have to do is reach out to an elder or a fluent speaker. They'll help you. You're never stuck. You don't need to. You don't need to look at the dictionary. The dictionary is right in the community. Because for me, it's better to ask an elder instead of trying to read the word, what it means, how to pronounce it. It's better for me to listen to an elder or a fluent speaker, how they're pronouncing it, to hear it, so I can teach these, the, the, the students how to say that word. Even my, uh, my granddaughter, my granddaughters, I failed as a parent. I failed because I think I always play my late husband, because he was, he, was, he couldn't talk free, he was a Métis. So our first language was English at home. But I think if I had a, a, a warrior, they would have all talked free. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. But, <laughs> but my, um, my parents, but I was lucky, even my dad was a Métis, my dad was a Gervais, he was fluent. And that was our first language. I was lucky that I had them. I was lucky that was even, uh, my mom couldn't even speak English at all. They, he, she used to take us because we started going to Ernie Studer and that's where we started learning our English. And of course, we were like right now my English is so broken. Even my accent is so heavy. <laughs> they would take us to, to the store and we'd have to try and go and translate for them what they wanted to from the store. And it was hard. But we did it, but I'm very thankful for the fluent speakers and spend time with the fluent speakers. And you don't have to, like I said, I don't follow no Munau curriculum how to teach my language. Why should I? Why should I follow the education curriculum when they didn't even give me the language? I follow my Google, my mothers, how they, they taught me. Yeah, I don't have to, I don't have to teach, okay, you're going to teach numbers this month. No, why should I? I didn't even know how to count until I probably was in my 20s. I didn't even know my colors until I was probably in my just about 30s. Because that we didn't learn all that. All we learned was how to move, how we woke up, what we did every day. So from that, that's how I try to teach my, my students now. And now my students, they can leave my class when I'm not there with the teachers. And those, and you know those Munel teachers, 
I want to check their sound basis, but they, they have to come into my classroom and they're already leading the class now. If, if they don't know what to expect, because the routine is there. All the class cards are there. All the movement are there. And the CD is there. We always, we always end up with, end it with the song. Like, and like I said, make sure that you, 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 we have to teach these kids with love. And, and I know some of you have probably heard my this over and over again, but you know, that's how I teach and I don't know which other way that I can say. But anyway, kids, you wanna do some more TPR? Okay. Some of you know about when you take pictures, the words out of a picture, pull the picture. Uh, anyway, these are the uh, I use. Some of you 
you might, you might, you might notice I say my words differently from you, that's okay. Just like, uh, this is how I teach at my community. Like I said, teach the way you say it at my community. Okay. So I would go. Mm -hmm. I would try to School, and that's where I usually post. And you'll see, and then you'll see those um, repeat after me. I try anyway, just you know what? I try to show the real things on the flashcards and I say the words and I just get them to repeat after me. So that's what we can do is get the kids to repeat after us when we're saying the word. Say, if I was teaching her, if I ha um, if I was teaching her cup. In my in where I'm from, we say we have this. In some other places, but you might hear ni huachikan, ni huachikan. So if you hear that those we have this on ni huachikan, they're just talking about a cup. That's two different ways of saying it. So I would tell the students. Thank you. 
also in my the school that I'm that I'm working for, they do a lot of land base. We take the kids outside. And another thing too, they only concentrate on the language. They don't do any uh, smudging because they don't want to step on toes because you know as human beings, we all have different beliefs, right? And we don't want to, so we just concentrate on the, on the language itself. And it'll be up to the parents, whatever faith they, what they want their kids to follow. So that's at Chief Matthew School I'm talking about. Like all of us are different. So that's what I was told when I first worked there. And they, but they get their elders involved. The elders come in there, they tell stories, or even for land base, like, you know, skinning and all that, the outdoor stuff. But for me, I just do the language. But you know, I really got my teaching. I didn't really get it from the instructors. I knew my language before I went to school. It's that I needed that paper. I needed that paper behind me to be able to work in a school. Yes. When I was, when I was, I, I had to, when I had to ask, it was hard for me, you know, to take that, these language courses in, uh, like, at the university here and in Blue Quills, because I was fluent and it was hard for me to write it. It was hard for me to understand it. I had to get, like, tutoring. But it wasn't hard for me to, like, you know, a big swataman, a big school. That's <coughs> not Because music's not my home. And most of us fluent speakers, we didn't learn how to write our language. But you know what? Once you get out of there, you make your own style of teaching and whatever works for you. Because that's what I did. I said, oh, I'm not this really high, highly educated teacher that has to follow a plan and everything. Because I said, and because I couldn't. I couldn't do it that way because I wasn't taught that way. My parents didn't teach me that way. My Bokum didn't teach me that way. I used my Bokum's curriculum. I used my Bokum's daily plans. And that's how I, I just followed that. And then that's what you could do. You can speak speak in Tansi speak Snamaboin, and you can follow that also. Yes? When I was going to university, we had a Cree teacher. I, I'm a fluent Cree speaker. And she said, I thought I was teaching basics. And I told her, I, I know how to speak Generation said, so "How do you say this again?" And of course, when you're a language teachers, 
A teacher, everybody thinks you know all the keywords and you don't. And you, you know, as language teachers here, you guys probably experienced that. How do you say this? I said, I don't know, like, you know. I thought you were a teacher, like, you know. And I would have to, I would have to help them and reach out to other foreign speakers. How would you say this? Uh, like, uh, like our, our language is very descriptive. How we see it, that's how we say those words, right? Yes. problem going to university and having low marks in that area, but what I was thinking is that I, I learned a lot of music through gospel singing mm -hmm. uh, in our language. We have the free books, it's in the Y dialect and PH, but still the, the music, I'm told that it's uh, kind of right through the provinces that it's all in Y, all the free song books, the hymn books that are in the Anglican church, the Catholic church, uh, and they all have the same language. So I learned a lot of words through singing mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the words well, a few of them still today i don't know what they mean mm -hmm. but they're there and i and it helps me pronunciate them as well yeah. so do you do anything with music yeah it, the, the only person i sing along with is brian mcdonald because <laughs> 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 i'm not a singer <laughs> i play with cds and i'll sing along with the kids <laughs> yeah or sometimes I'll get my, like, some people that are musicians to come into my class and come and sing for us. But usually we just do TPR all day. And you know, it's not easy. You have to put your heart and soul into it in order for you to plant that seed, that language seed into the kids. And I know we all have that seed. And you know, whatever, whatever I said here, take it. If it's gonna help, take it, because it's not mine. It was taught to me also from my my grandparents and my community. So and the elders. So whatever you guys can use from my words, take it. It's yours and pass it on. That's all I ask is just to pass on that seed. So before before we uh, any more questions. For me, like when I say, um, <laughs> one of the words that I'm teaching is uh, salmon and salmina. So I would use, okay, if we're gonna, because salmina is a living, right? Touch something that's alive. And I would have a like, a, um, I would touch like her and I say, salmon squeezes. Salmina, the Even like say um, another that's uh, like a set that's like a sentence you we were do we did there. Salmon na ti tapuin touch the chair. Miss a tim for a horse. Miss a tim pin pa tau. The horse is running. Wap this kisu miss a tim pin pa tau. You did remember these kids are only in like nursery right? So you have to go word by word. Miss at them, rapis kisu, pin pata. And then the white horse is running. But if I, if I, if I, as a, if I was going to go uh, wor, uh, translate, translate it word by word, of course it's not going to sound like a sentence because I thought I am saying horse, 
quite running. Because our, our language is backwards, right? So, but, but that's when, when, if I'm saying, well, I'm saying the white horse is running. See, things like that, just go word by word. Don't make it difficult for yourself. Because these are little babies. As fluent speakers, they would understand what you're trying to say. But if you're teaching even grade, the grade sevens, they're like babies. And if you're teaching, teach the same thing from kinder, kindergarten all the way like to grade seven, teach the same words, teach the same class card words. Because you want them to communicate with each other. You don't want to teach, okay, okay I'm gonna teach kindergarten uh, numbers one to five, and I'm gonna teach grade ones the colors, I'm gonna teach um, these grade two, threes, these words. No, teach the same words. Because those kids are smart. They can pick up the language. We were smart. We were what, when we were brought up, they didn't say, okay, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do, do these words. They talked to us as like adults. So to treat those kids with love and respect them and teach them the same words because they when you know what? My students, they told me, oh, great teacher. I said, what? We were playing pre at my house. And you know when they play Cree, that means they're like, when we're doing TPR, like, you know, they were doing things like that. That's where we want those kids. And you know what, that's a blessing. When I hear that, oh my gosh, thank you. Like, thank you, God. Thank you, Creator, for planting that seed, helping me plant that seed, that language seed into these students. That's where we want those students. Even when they say, when they, when they try to put them little sentences and they don't they, they don't sound right, that's okay. At least you can understand them what they're saying, right? That's a blessing. Encourage those students. Love those students. Okay, before we end, Mipa Winfrey Tree. 